Good afternoon, everyone. So my name is Lena Lampinen. I'm a church musician in the Dogmus department and a research study program. I graduated as a as an organist. I mean, a church musician and a organ as a major instrument, and then found myself in Africa a few, a few years later. So I'm taking you to a very different context now. Uh, singing in a choir, I'm talking about Tanzania. Singing in a choir in Tanzania, in the churches in Tanzania, is a very, very popular activity. My research is about, about choirs, choir conductors, choir uh, repertoire in the Lutheran church, but choirs are very popular also in the Catholic church, in Anglican church, in all the, all the churches in Tanzania. My research focuses on one diocese in Evangelical Lutheran Church in Tanzania. The, the Lutheran Church in Tanzania is one of the, the largest Lutheran churches in the whole world. And that's why I'm concentrating in, in one diocese of that huge church. And that's situated, located in the northern part of the country somewhere between the Mount Kilimanjaro and Serengeti National Park. That's the area we are talking about now. And in, the, in this area, in this one diocese, North Central Diocese of the Lutheran Church, there are hundreds of choirs. They are many. Many people join the choirs and that's their like, most important hobby. And it's even more than a hobby, it's a way of life for many. The choirs are many and the types are many. So there are mixed choirs, that's the most popular type. Mixed choirs that sing either a cappella or then with electric instruments, basically meaning keyboards and guitars. And uh, mixed choirs singing a cappella, sing either Tanzanian music or Western, Western songs. And then electric instruments, that means more like a gospel, gospel kind of music or popular church music. Uh, then there are this group of choirs singing local traditional music. And um, mostly those choirs mean Maasai choirs. So this, this area uh, in northern Tanzania is area of where the Maasai lives. And that's why in those parishes of the Lutheran Church, there are many Maasai choirs. And then women's choirs are there as well. Not that many, but they do exist. And as I said, singing in a choir is more like a way of life. So the, the commitment to this activity is very different from what I've seen, for example, here in Finland, when I worked as a church musician in the parishes. So those choirs, they have their rehearsals mostly three times a week. That can be even more, but three times is the most common. And then they attend the Sunday service every Sunday. So that means that four, at least four times a week they come together to sing. And it, I haven't seen it happen here. <laughs> My research uh, focuses on one Lutheran diocese, as I said, in the northern part of Tanzania. And my main research question is, what are the factors, either musical or non-musical factors, that influence the repertoire selection? So basically, why do the choirs, the church choirs, sing what they sing? I talk about choirs, I talk about choir conductors, and then choir repertoire. 
So why do the choir conductors choose the music they choose? What kind of factors influence that? And this is a combination of different, very different data, both qualitative and quantitative, but my focus is on qualitative data. First, I had a survey just to get some background information, to get information about the context. How do the choirs work, function, what are the conductors like, what what do they sing? What kind of repertoire do they sing? And 105 choir conductors participated in this survey. And among those 105, I chose 10 conductors for interviews. And that was very interesting. I tried to find very different conductors and I traveled around the, the diocese trying to first um, find them <laughs> where they were, and then I had very interesting discussions with them. I would describe my approach to this data as a form of content analysis. I started to read and read and read and uh, try to find out what do I have here, and then different themes have, have come up. I also have a few video recordings of choir competitions and I, I am planning to analyze those to see do the choirs actually sing what the conductors claim they are singing. So, but that's still, I'm thinking about that. You may ask why did I end up <laughs> to, to Africa, to Tanzania? I lived there in Arusha for five years. I was a teacher at the university there, a music teacher in, in the music department at Makumira. So I have my own experiences there, from there. Tanzania wasn't first as a research field for myself. It just became, became one. I used the world field here although this is not an eth ethno ethnographical <laughs> uh, study. But it, it was a field for me as well. Since I sang in a choir, I, w I was a member of a, of a local church choir. I sang with it, I performed with it. So those experiences are part of my research as well. This is still an ongoing process. There are many things going on. I'm going back and forth between my data and my own text and I'm analyzing the data I have. But I, I wanted to share one, one example of those things that I have found interesting so far. This will continue and uh, there will be many other things coming as well. But this was something that I hadn't experienced, at least here in Finland, I hadn't experienced uh, this kind of thing happening between choirs and uh, choir conductors. And this is cooperation between the conductors both inside a choir, usually there are several conductors in one, one choir, and then also between different choirs. We are talking about conductors who mostly don't have musical education. Some of them have studied, but they are very rare cases. Some of the conductors have participated in some workshops, but most of them do not read music, for example. They are conductors. They, many of them compose their own music. And uh, so the context is very different. But cooperation between these choir conductors is a very important way of widening repertoire 
and also learning from others. Conductors are invited by other conductors to visit, uh, to visit their choirs, to teach their own composition, teach different styles of music that the others don't know. So I have noticed that this is one of the most important things happening inside the choirs. But this is just one example. 